Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church. We are so glad that you're worshiping with us today, wherever you might be. We hope that you will find this worship service very meaningful for you, even if you're having to sit in your pajamas in the living room. Psalms 29, 2 through 4 says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. So as we sing this morning, we want to sing majestically to the Lord as we worship him in song.
Well, good morning, and uh, welcome to First Baptist Church Online. Uh, for those of you I've not yet met, my name is Ben Carner. I'm the pastor here at First Baptist Church, and I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for making the effort to come and to be with us this morning in some sort of virtual setting. And let me just say this. If this feels awkward for you, you have no idea how awkward it feels for us. Uh, we're trying very hard to, make, to not make this look like some sort of hostage video. Um, so in any case, we know that this... Uh, situation has, has drastically altered our lives already, um, but we are the body of Christ, and the body of Christ has never been about a building. It's about people, and so even though we can't physically gather together, we are still united by the love and the presence of Christ. This morning's bulletin, including the worship lyrics, the scriptures, the outlines, all those things, uh, will be posted in the description below this video. Also, we'll post it on YouTube as well, so you can have the, the morning's uh, bulletin with the, with the things that are happening and the order of things and all that sort of thing. Uh, fill in the blanks, follow along with the sermon, that sort of thing. Um, also, I would encourage you to participate as much as you can in this worship service. Uh, sing the songs, be, uh, be part of this. Um, take notes, pay attention. Uh, to the reading of God's Word. Our scripture reading this morning is going to be from Psalm 46. And the psalmist wrote this, God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore we will not be afraid, though the earth trembles and the mountains topple into the depths of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with turmoil. There is a river, its streams delight the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is within her. She will not be toppled. God will help her when the morning draws. Nations rage. Kingdoms topple. The earth melts when he lifts his voice. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, see the works of the Lord, who brings devastation on the earth. He makes wars cease through the earth. He shatters bows and cuts spears into pieces. He sets wagons ablaze. Stop your fighting, and know that I am God, exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Let's pray. Father God, we recognize right now in our nation and our world there's so much turmoil. And it's so easy, Father, for us to watch the news and, and watch the, the headlines and and just get so afraid and so fearful about what the future holds. But Father, we recognize that our future in you is secure. Father, you give us strength. You are our fortress. We turn to you in the times of certainty and uncertainty. And Father, your peace is what sustains us. Father, I pray that you'd bring a healing from this plague. Um, whatever form that might take, we don't know at this time, but you know. You are in control of all things. And so we appeal to you as the Lord of hosts, the God who's in control of everything. Father, your people are humbling themselves. We're, we're praying. We're asking you to do something in our world that, that, that needs to be done that we can't do. It feels overwhelming, Father. There's so many that um, are, are, are fearful and full of anxiety, maybe even some panic. And Father, I pray that you would deliver us from those feelings, that we would put our trust in you and not in anything else. And Father, I pray that you would continue to unite this body of believers in a spirit of love, in a spirit of concern for one another. This would be a time for us to shine, to reach out to one another, making sure that everyone's okay, making sure that uh, everyone has what they need. And Father, I pray that your body, the body of Christ, would shine brightly in this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jay? Thank you very much. We're going to sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
been learning King of Kings.
and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come. John speaks in Revelation. After this, I heard the sound like a roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Alleluia, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. When I stand before your throne, dressed in glory, not my own, what a joy I'll sing of on that day. Not till then, broken dreams, forgotten in the minor key, everything as it was meant to be. And we will worship, worship forever in your presence. We Hallelujah to the King. 
and we will worship, worship forever in your presence. We will sing, we will worship, worship you and endless time. like it should in Laredo. Lord, we know that you're in control, so we appeal to you this morning. And we pray for your blessing on our congregation this morning as they worship where they are. And Lord, bless Pastor Ben as he brings the message in a few minutes. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, this, uh, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, this was a week I was supposed to be on vacation. I know that that sounds crazy, but that's where I was supposed to be this week. Um, I thought that it would be better uh, not to do that this week and to be here and to be communicating and getting things set up uh, with the things that are happening. Pastor Felipe uh, was scheduled. You always give the associate pastor the worst times to speak, right? That's, uh, that's kind of like what, you, what you're supposed to do. And so, and so but anyway, he was, he was scheduled to speak long before uh, this happened. And so I'm glad, I'm thankful to have him here. And he's going to come. He's going to deliver the message uh, this morning. And uh, may it bless your hearts. Can you hear me now? There we go. Okay. Good morning. Uh, before I begin today's message, I would like to uh, praise God for his uh, sovereignty. Uh, just a few weeks back, Pastor Ben addressed the congregation regarding prayer as one of our core values here at Prayer Baptist. And as an essential in every believer's life, prayer is all about Submitting, submitting. 
and submitting to God's sovereign and guiding hand. At that time when uh, Pastor Ben talked about prayer, the people and the government of this country were navigating through life, counting their blessings with no apparent sign that someone or something would disrupt the country's soaring economic prosperity. And then the coronavirus happened. Unexpected uh, for some people maybe, and we all know how much uncertainty about the future in every category this global pandemic has created. Yes, for those of us that believe in a God who is sovereign, we know that nothing takes, takes God by surprise. That should be our confidence and hope, knowing that in God's economy, there are no accidents. And now here we are, as God's people, um, you and your home, through this one wonderful way of uh, communicating now so the church can stay connected. And now here we are as God's people studying the Lord's Prayer. And it just so happened that today we will be looking at verse 11, where Jesus invites us to ask our Father for our daily bread. This is a coincidence that this particular verse falls on a week of much social turmoil? I think not. God orchestrated everything so that you and I will know that he is with us and he is mindful of his children here at Fair Baptist Church Laredo. Psalm 103 verses 2 verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let's pray before we begin. Father God, we, we thank you, first of all, for your love, for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity that even though in these circumstances we see your mighty hand, we see how you are a God who is with us, is in us, and is for us. Father, we pray this morning that uh, you will speak to our hearts as we uh, address the subject of you being our provider for our daily needs. I pray that uh, you will also uh, uh, encourage us and challenge us to live in a way that will be more pleasing to you. You created us uh, for you, Father, for worship. And help us to uh, worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, knowing that uh, the way we live is a living expression of, of our worship, our desire to honor you. Be with us today, with those who are um, watching at home, those who are listening. I pray that your Holy Spirit will help us to be sensitive to his voice so we can um, honor you and obey you in every way. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are in uh, week three of our series on the Lord's Prayer found in Matthew chapter 6. Please uh, follow me from your home as we read it together, starting in verse 9. And... Jesus said, therefore I tell you, do not, that's now the Lord's Prayer. We're going to the Lord's Prayer in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 11. Okay, he said, our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Today we begin to look at the second section of the Lord's Prayer. In the first part, Jesus tells us that our most important focus in prayer should be worship. 
the, advancing, the advancement of his kingdom and the submission to his sovereign will. Your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The second part of the prayer focuses on three requests that have to do with us. Give us, forgive us, and lead us. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation. And before we move on, we must admit that the Lord's Prayer also focuses on a lot of petition about, about us. In the book of Genesis chapter 22, we read the powerful story of when Abraham's faith was tested. During this experience, God introduced himself as Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. God uses in this passage the name Jireh to describe himself as the provider in the context of the most profound physical need a person can face, the loss of life. God called Abraham to sacrifice his only son, the son of the promise. When Abraham was about to execute God's command, we read in Genesis chapter 22, verses 11 to 14, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. So God the provided, Jehovah Jireh, gave life. He acted faithfully in response to Abraham's faith in his provision. Now, there is another side of Jehovah Jireh, which is to provide for our daily needs and our daily bread. Uh, certainly, these are not trivial elements Unfortunately, we do not think often, often enough about how God is the provider of everything that we need to function in life. That means our, our jobs, our family, our friends, our local church, transportation, and the list goes on and on. Also, we don't seem to understand what the Lord will provide really means and therefore we don't know how to ask him when we pray for our daily bread this morning um, message title is give us this day our daily bread and the main idea is that our heavenly father invites us to go to him for our daily bread the main idea is that our heavenly father invites us to go to him for our daily bread the application is that our Heavenly Father wants us to take comfort in knowing that He will provide for our physical needs, for our daily bread. So the question for us is, how should God children pray for their needs? Number one is God children should pray knowing that God cares about our needs. God children should pray knowing that God cares about our needs. And if you go with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, Jesus is speaking, saying here, he started in verse 25, Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap 
or stored away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The, the point Jesus is making here is not that we should abandon our responsibilities to provide for our families or to plan accordingly during a time of crisis. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, you can look at that in your Bible. This is, uh, there was an issue there in the church, obviously, that people that was willing to work, um, people that was able to work, were not willing to work, okay? And uh, this is what the Apostle Paul said to them. In fact, when we were with you, this is what we commanded you. If anyone isn't willing to work, he should not eat, all right? Obviously, there was an issue uh, in, that, uh, in the midst of that um, uh, congregation with um, wanting to work. Okay, of, of course, we know that uh, the circumstances uh, nowadays is different. Uh, we can work from home. And some of us, you know, might have a hard time staying home. I can't wait to, to be out. But uh, still, we have the possibility to, to provide for our families, even, you know, if we work from home. So, but the battle line is that Jesus is telling us in Matthew 6 is to stop behaving like unbelievers because unbelievers do not have the awareness of the goodness and faithfulness of God to provide for their needs. Uh, in this passage, Jesus points out to them how our Heavenly Father cares for his creation. And, and Jesus makes his point about, uh, look at the grass of the field, look at the birds, you know, points out what he created and how he provides for them. And uh, Basically what he's saying, look at that and how much more your heavenly father will provide for you. Won't God do much more for you? In one of his articles, um, theologian Archie Pro tells us a story related to the importance of knowing that our physical need, in this case food, will be met daily. Uh, he writes and says, after the Korean War ended, South Korea was left with a large number of children who had been orphaned by the war. We've seen the same thing in the Vietnam conflict, in Bosnia, and in other places. In the case of Korea, relief agency came in to deal with all the problems that arose in connection with having so many orphaned children. And one of, the people, one of the people involved in this relief effort told me about a problem they encountered with children who were in the orphanages. Even though the children had three meals a day provided for them, they were anxious. They were anxious at night and had difficulty sleeping. As they talked to the children, they soon discovered that the children had great anxiety about whether they would have food the next day. To help to solve this problem, the relief worker in one of the particular orphanages decided that each night when the children were put to, to bed, the nurses 
um, there will place a single piece of bread in each child's hand. The bread wasn't intended to be eaten. It was simply intended to be held by the children as they went to sleep. It was a security blanket for them, reminding them that there will be provision for their daily needs. Sure enough, the bread calmed the children's anxiety and helped them to sleep. So Jesus is telling us, don't act like pagans. Don't act like them. Trust your heavenly father. He will provide for you. So likewise, as God's children, we pray and take comfort in knowing that our heavenly father will meet our physical needs, that he will have food, that he will that we will have food or bread. And then God's children should pray for the necessities of life, not for luxuries. Number two, God's children should pray for the necessities of life, not for luxuries. And let's go to Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. And Jesus is being approached by someone who comes out of the crowd and said to him in verse 13, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possession. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what should I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very, night, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it is. This is how it will be with whoever just store up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. And Jesus, Jesus is saying here, do not trust your wealth. Don't trust your wealth. Jesus is saying, do not, you don't know when your soul will be required from the Lord. And three, he says, our possession obviously will go to someone else after we leave this world. And I want to quote again Dr. Arsis Pro when he speaks in one of his um, uh, booklet titled, Does Prayer Change Things? He says, when we pray for our daily bread, God provides for his people. It is noteworthy that the request here is not, is for daily bread, not daily steak or daily prime bread or anything like that. God provides for the necessities, but not always for our niceties. While in seminary, I had a classmate who owned a private airplane. Uh, one day he shared with, with the class that one of his friends was going through a deep depression, okay? Because someone he knew bought a new plane that was faster than his. So you wonder, oh, when is that, when, when it stops? When greed stops? It doesn't really. Um, it can be things like that. You know, I have transportation, but my neighbor has a car who is, uh, is a newer car and maybe faster. Uh, God keep us, you know, may, may God save us from uh, thinking this way. Uh, Haddon Robinson said in one of his books, notice also that when we pray, give us our daily bread, we ask for others in the family as well as ourselves. If we pray this prayer in sincerity, it delivers me from selfishness and from accumulating stuff 
for myself. If the father supplies me with two loaves and my brother or sister with none, I understand that God has indeed answered my prayers. My extra loaf is not storing but it's not for storing but for sharing. Mm. Uh, this picture looks familiar to you, especially when when we hear stories about the grocery store people, you know, nowadays uh, getting a little bit too excited about particular things or particular um, elements that they need for their homes. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but this is very current teaching. This was, you know, uh, written a thousand years ago and uh, it's very current for us. God's word speak day. So God's children should pray for the necessities of life, not for luxury. Also, and that's point number three, God's children should pray with confidence and expectancy, not demanding, but with a humble attitude of daily dependence. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Confidence and expectancy doesn't mean arrogance and presumption. We must always remember who God is and who we are before him. We must always remember who God is and who we are before him. If you have any questions about that, just go to Isaiah chapter 6 and look at the experience that Isaiah, the prophet of God, had when he came face to face with God. Um, theologians say that he was literally deconstructed. The image that he had of himself was deconstructed. And, and that's a very interesting language there because for those of you that are in the area of counseling or psychology, when uh, doctors have to deal with a narcissistic personality, what they need to do is to deconstruct the idea of self in that particular individual. Because of course they have an idea of themselves that is not really true. Um, and it's interesting how theologians uh, say that about how Isaiah and, um, was deconstructed in the way how he saw himself as he faced God. So we always have to remember that when we come before the Lord, we come remembering who he is and who we are. Our Heavenly Father is first holy and worthy of all our praise. And he's not a genie we have in our pockets that if we rob him in a particular way, he give us magically what we want. Uh, may God and through his grace keep us from ever approaching him in this way. He is laudable and owns no man anything. Psalm 115 verse three says, if you look in your Bibles, we don't have that over there, but if you look in your Bible, Psalm 115, verse 3, speaking about the sovereignty of God and who he is, he said, he does all that he pleases. He does all that he pleases. He doesn't have to ask anybody. He is God. Yet the amazing thing is this. Yet he is gracious and compassionate to provide for his children. Amen. George Mueller was a Christian missionary and evangelist and a coordinator of orphan, orphanages in Bristol, England. I'm going to read this for you. Uh, through his faith and prayers and without asking for money, 
he had the privilege of caring for over 120,000 orphan children. He also traveled over 200,000 miles by ship to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in 42 countries and to challenge believers about world mission and trusting God. In his journal, Mueller recorded miracle after miracle of God's provision and answered prayer. In one of his accounts, uh, he tells us that one morning, all the plates and cup and bowls were on the table, but they were empty. There was no food and no money to buy. The children were standing, waiting for their morning meal, when Mueller said, children, you know that we might be in time for school. Then lifting up his hands, he prayed, dear father, we thank you for what you are going to give us to eat. There was a knock on the door. The baker stood there and said, Mr. Mueller, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have bread for breakfast and the Lord wanted me to send you some. So I got up at 2 a.m. and baked some fresh bread and brought it. Mr. Mueller thanked the baker and no sooner had he left when there was a second knock at the door. It was the milkman. He announced that his milk cart had broken down right in front of the orphanage and he would like to give the children his cans of fresh milk so he could empty his wagon and repair it. Amazing. And the Apostle Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, after uh, he thanked the church for their generosity towards him, he said to them, and may God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And this was definite, definitely true in the life and ministry of George Mueller. God's children should pray with confidence and expectancy, not demanding, not demanding. And somehow we believe that God is obligated to give us what we ask. We already know that he's God and we are not. Um, so we should pray with confidence and expectancy, not demanding that with a humble attitude of daily dependence, knowing, knowing that we are his children and he will meet our needs. And we go to point number four. Also, God's children should pray remembering that God give us all we have in the ultimate sense. God children should pray, remembering, remembering that God gives us all we have in the ultimate sense. I'm going to read the first part of Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. I'm going to read what some of, one of the commentaries said about this particular phrase. Bible scholars suggest that the expression in him we live means by him, by his originally forming us and continually sustaining us. No words can better express our constant dependence on God. He is the original fountain of life and he upholds us each moment. For in him we live and move and move is an expression denoting constant and absolute dependence. There is no idea of dependence more striking than that we owe to him the ability to perform the slightest motion. For in him we live and move and have our being. Paul traces our dependence on him, the lowest pulsation of life to the highest power of action and continued existing. It would be impossible to express in more emphatic language our entire dependence on God. For in him we live and move and have our being. 
As God's children, we must remember that our existence has been given and sustained by our Heavenly Father. Why I'm saying this? Because of two things. <laughs> okay. We have this idea that we are autonomous. And you, the, the word autonomous uh, is a compound word that means self-run. That's where the word automobile comes from, self-run. According to the scripture, we know that we are not self-run. We are not autonomous. The only person who is autonomous is God himself. That's number one. Number two, it's because as human beings, we easily forget what he owe, that we owe everything we, we are and have to our Heavenly Father. Everything we are, you know, everything we have come from our Heavenly Father, and we forget, we forget. Um, the, the Apostle Paul writing in 1 Corinthians 15 saying that uh, when he, start, when he um, uh, calls us to partake of the communion, you know, when Jesus said, after he has broken the bread, you know, he gave it to me, he gave it to them and said, do this in remembrance of me. You know, after supper, um, he took the cup and said, this is the cup, you know, um, of my blood. Do this. Every time you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Uh, the prophet in the Old Testament calls us to repent, but also to remember, 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 remember. And you go to the book of uh, Judges, somehow it just takes just a generation of, to forget what the God has done in the past. Yeah. And once again, we are called to remember what he's done. And you might wonder, hey, that's that, that will never happen to me. If I see something that God has done for my family or for my spouse or for my kids, I'll be forever grateful. Yet we forget. We forget. Just we forget the essentials about thanking God and pray to him in a way that we know that he will provide because he has already been providing for our needs. If we look for a moment at the experience of the Israelites in Exodus chapter 6, uh, while in the desert, God miraculously provided for them. But what happened next? They stopped thanking God for his provision, and they began to grumble about the food God was provided for them. They started to miss and long for the food in Egypt. Really? They start missing the food in Egypt, you had good food. Remember? You were slaves over there. But no, they forgot what God had delivered them from and took for granted his provision. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, let us always remember that God is constantly sustaining us. Constantly sustaining us. Just like Paul says to us, in him we live and move and have our being. And, and I would like to conclude with this. Um, Jesus calls us to pray in a particular way, we indicate, which indicates that we ought to approach God with due awe and reverence. We should humbly follow his guidance they tell us to go to our Heavenly Father in submission and say, Father, give us this day our daily bread. The scripture also tells us of a particular need that human beings have because we are not only forget that God is the creator and he's the sustainer of everything but people that don't know Christ, uh, they're lost. And Jehovah Jireh is the God who provides for us, for our physical needs. But also it's a God who has provided for us a way to be reconciled with our God. 
If you're listening, if you're watching this morning, I want to encourage you to think about your eternal destination. Uh, we might be wondering about the coronavirus, whether it's going to hit us or not, but in 50 years, how many of us are going to be here? In 100 years, guarantee nobody's going to be here. We all going to leave this world. The question is, where are you going to spend eternity? And the Bible tells us in John 3.16 that for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We look at Jehovah Jireh as the God who provided for Abraham and that spared Abraham's son from being sacrificed. Yet at the same time, God himself sent his son to die on the cross for your sin, for your sins. So if you believe in him, you may have eternal life. After feeding the 5,000 in John chapter 6, the people were asking uh, Jesus, surprisingly, for a sign for them to know if he was the Messiah. And they went on and told them, you know, our father had the manna, the, the miraculous uh, food in the desert. And Jesus told them, you know, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they say, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said in verse 35 of uh, John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. God has delivered his son, Jesus, for us. What do we need to do? What do you need to do just to receive the gift? The gift of Jesus. The Bible also tells us that we are all sinners in need of a savior. It tells us that, but that God demonstrated his love towards us while we were still sinners. Jesus died for our sins. It tells us about the problem with sin. We are not victim of sin. We need repentance because in our human nature, we go and sin against God purposely. So if this morning, God has been speaking to you, and you know that you need a Savior. God has been speaking through his Holy Spirit. I encourage you to, to give your life to Christ. I encourage you to repent of your sin. I said, God, I repent from my sin. I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. I believe in what he did for me on the cross. I believe in his resurrection. I believe that you sent him to give me that heavenly bread so I can live eternally with you. I encourage you to pray with me this morning. Or if you would like to call somebody um, in the church, we still are available, the pastor is available to uh, speak to you or talk to one of your family members at home. So let's pray. Father God, this morning I pray that... Um, you will continue speaking to our hearts, knowing that, yes, you are our provider. You provide for that um, bread that we need on a daily basis. You, you provide for our needs. Yet at the same time, you provide for our spiritual need, which is far more uh, important, Father. I pray that you will speak to those that are listening, those who are watching us this morning, Lord, that you would, um, Holy Spirit, will speak to them so they can come to you in repentance, recognizing, Lord, their condition as sinners, but at the same time recognizing and trusting you and your promise that you provided for them a way of salvation. Father, I pray that uh, you will bless them. Lord, I pray that you would uh, continue working in their lives. We thank you, Father, for your word because your word is true, your word is living. 
We thank you, Father, and, and we want to honor you and worship you. And we pray that this week we will have many opportunities to share the good news of the gospel and to remind people that you are our God, Jehovah, our provider, the one that we can come and ask for our daily bread. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are going to sing a, a verse of invitation in case you have made a decision. Again, you're welcome to call one of the pastors and talk to them. Or you can call one of the deacons and talk to them or talk to a family member who's already a Christian. I want to thank Pastor Felipe for delivering the message, especially at this very difficult time uh, to deliver this message. And I pray that it is a blessing to your heart to know that God has promised to meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And that is a, quite a stockpile that he has for us. He blesses us richly. Um, at this time, normally, uh, we would worship through our tithes and offerings by passing the, the plates around the, the worship center. Obviously, we can't do that. It'd be very, very boring to pass plates around the, the uh, worship center this morning. But there are some ways that you can give. Um, you can give uh, through tithes and offerings in several ways. Uh, first is through our Faith Life app. Um, if you go and you download the Faith Life app and search for uh, First Baptist Church Laredo, you can give through that as well. Uh, also, and if you don't, and if you're not comfortable with that, I understand, so reach out to our church office. Um, Estella will be able to help you set that up, or, or Karen can help you as well uh, get that set up. Also, you can give through your bank, just like you pay bills, you can set up to, to do it that way. And then if that's still not good, you can also just simply mail it to us. That will work as well. So at this time, we'll have a closing song. Amen. Whom shall I fear?
place by my side.